uh, very often there's a weather company API behind one of those calls. And so they've packaged those together in a set of, of uh, bundles. And they have the four bundles that we're giving you access today to are, is the core weather data package, the enhanced current conditions, the, the forecast models, and the severe data package. And for each of those, we're gonna dive into them in a moment and kind of look at some of the uh, capabilities of each of those uh, different packages. But essentially, look up the forecast, look up the historical data, look up the Albanac, you know, tell me, tell me the current, show me the current set of tiles. Um, and, and also the alerts around, you know, what's happening with flooding and hurricanes and tornadoes and, and so forth from, from various sources, not just US based, but across the globe. Uh, we've got uh, the weather companies got partnerships with Australia and, and Canada and elsewhere. Um, there are some restrictions. I, I will I'll be um, upfront about that. The weather company terms and conditions, when you go sign up to get an API key, um, be cautious of, of where and how you use um, those, those APIs. Obviously, don't build them into uh, mission critical, life critical types of uh, scenarios there. I think we restrict you from using them for military purposes and all sorts of other legal stuff. So do read the terms and conditions. All right, so first thing you're asking is, John, how do I get an API key? And so we've got a link here to register to get an API key. And um, we're gonna, I'm gonna take you over there because it's kind of cool. So you, you kind of come and like I said, read through the terms and conditions, you check the box, and then you click on the register to get an API key and we share that API key with you. Um, in a dialog box, which you want to copy and paste and put into your API calls. All right, so pretty clever, pretty easy to do. Um, and so that's so now now you've got your API key, what can you do with it? And we're going to actually dive into some documentation. But before we go there, because I we're going to get really deep really fast, it's kind of kind of fun. Um, I want to show you some of those remember those packages. So the weather operations center is how we bundle all of this together and they've got um the the four packages of of apis which is like dozens of of different calls and it's like me in a candy store you give me a restful api and a swagger doc and i'm like oh this is cool what can i build with it um and i so i started reading through the the the, the pdfs so there's actually some pdfs and so the first one this is core um and so the core gives me access to you know daily and intraday forecasts and some site observations um i get some weather alerts and then i can you know ask questions like where am i on the planet give me utility apis based on uh zip codes and, and addresses and, and longitude and latitude the urban is really kind of useful if you're building a climate change solution and you want to look back in time and say you know what was the average peaks and average lows uh, for particular points in a planet. Um, so we've got some almanac data that's very helpful. And you can do longitudinal studies around uh, the almanac. So take advantage of those. And then um, I was playing recently, uh, Jeff kind of turned me on to some of these imagery tiles. So I, I've got a, an example I finished up last night uh, that can let's build a, a radar map and a uh, satellite map. I pull the tiles from the weather company and I I put them on a, on a map. So I built it from scratch, and Jeff's going to show you some much more professional ones. I am not, you know, the weather man, um, Al Roker. So I was, but I did play with the radar and satellite map layers, and I had a good time. And I'll show you my example there. <laughs> the next well, a set of APIs we've got is the current conditions. What's kind of cool about this one? is let me scroll down is this one gives you a bunch of crowd sourced data so um the weather company many years ago bought the weather underground and you can sign up so i'm a citizen scientist and including a you know ibm developer advocate so I, and i said i was a weather nerd yeah so i'm a weather nerd on the roof of my house i have a personal weather station and so when you ask me what the weather is, I can tell you what the weather is in my backyard uh, because I can go and query that. And all the data from my PWS 
is is I have a weather underground API key and I upload it to um, to this service and I can actually use the weather company APIs to query back the the conditions on my roof in my backyard. So you know, and oh, by the way, there are PWSs all throughout the country. I think millions of them. And there's not just one in in New York. Uh, or in Ridgewood, but you know the fire station's got one, and you know neighbors, you know a couple of blocks away, have got others. So I could build hyper local weather forecasts based on you know what's happening in Ridgewood, New Jersey, if I chose to. So kind of clever. And so this API stack gives me access to uh, the PWS weather observations, so personal weather station. All right. And I can look at my own, I can look at other histories as well. So it's kind of clever if, you, if you've got those. The next package we've got, so forecast. So everyone, with, maybe not for climate change, but you know, you wake up in the morning and you decide what to wear today. You, you look at the weather and you say, well, it's gonna be sunny, it's gonna be cool, it's gonna be hot, you know, should I go to the beach? And so you wanna know what the forecast is and you wanna know that hyper local answer. You don't want to know. My parents like they, they live like ninety miles from New York, and but they still are within range of of like the weather at the on the Empire State Building. And they call me up and they tell me the weather. I'm like, Dad, that's New York. You live ninety miles away. It's different where you are because you know they're at the beach and stuff. And so you really want to know what the hyper local weather forecast is. Not so much that major metropolis 90 miles away. And so that's what the enhanced forecast APIs really tell you how. And so what's, what's kind of cool about this one is that we can do um, really, really tight forecasts. So should I, you know, if you're standing on a soccer field and you want to make sure your kids are going to be safe, you know, lightning strikes and um, the now cast sort of is really important. So the 15 minute forecasts become really critical. And then not just can I know right now, but can I plan my wedding or the big, you know, holiday weekend event um, 15 days in advance. So not only is there a three day and a five day and a seven day and a 10 day and a 15 day uh, forecast. So we can go and, you know, create what the forecasts are, you know, stretching out because we're all looking forward to summer especially with, the, with the, the, all the restrictions we've had for so long, we're eager to get outside and down to the beach. All right, so that the last package of APIs that are available is called the Severe Weather Package. Those of you that are in the Midwest of the United States right now, you know, like there's flooding up and down the, the various Missouri and Mississippi rivers. Um, and then, you know, of course, monsoon seasons in other parts of the world. So we really care about severe weather and the weather reports. Uh, so the National Weather Service puts out a bunch of alerts. Every county puts out those alerts. And so what the weather company does is they aggregate all of that together and they, they have an API that you can go and query and you can get the uh, alert headlines and the alert details. And I've got a couple of examples of that as well. Um, you know, the storm reports and the, and the lightning strikes. Um, this is crazy. If you've ever been in, in a hailstorm, crazy. You want to know that pretty, pretty quickly. All right. So, so that's the severe weather. Um, get yourself an API key by joining Call for Code. And then, Jeff, we're going to dig into some, some APIs here. And so in my blog post, I link over to the actual uh, documents here. And I think we've got, you know, mostly documents and you're gonna have to troll, if you're a developer, you know, trawl through it and we'll, we'll kind of show you a few. So this, these are the list of all of the different packages. So I think you've got like a, you know, dozen of them. We're gonna give developers for call for code access to core, uh, current conditions, enhanced forecast and severe weather. Uh, there's others that, you know, you as a customer can come and buy from the weather company, but that's, you know, take your, your paycheck um, type of things. All right, so let's dig in. So there's a couple of different summary links here. And, you know, this is where I, I got all juiced up and I started to read about the five day, the 10 day, the three day uh, forecasts and, and the almanac data. So that was really helpful. 
and some of my um, uh, solutions for call for code and, and climate change. And then I started to go grab some tiles from, from the various uh, uh, layers here. And I learned all about how to put tiles together in my little example. Maybe I have some time uh, to show you that. Uh, so I had a good time putting that together. The other thing, so these are, so I've got a personal weather station set of examples. I want to show you that. Let's, let's actually jump there because that was always a good time. Um, so what I did is I took a bunch of these API APIs and they're RESTful services. If we go look at one of them, like let's just go open this one up here. Um, I had to go and, and read through it. You know, I, I signed up first from my personal weather station. I got an API key and I also got one from, from you guys, a weather company and, you know, developers on our call today can go and grab a, a key as well. And so I started to read through this. I'm like, all right, that's kind of fun. I, when I signed up for my weather company, they gave me a station ID and I, and I built for, for my own little uh, projects here, um, a set of nodes. And so if you're a node red developer, node red lets you drag and drop low code type of environment, but still built on top of Node.js. And so I make for you all of those RESTful calls and I construct the, the uh, RESTful string of parameters. And so I, I put them together. I called it the Node Red Contrib TWC Weather. And I've got a bunch of different nodes so that you can just drag and drop onto your palette and do a historical or the forecast or the summaries of the seven days. And I tell you how to ins install it. And you could go get yourself an API. So I went over to the Weather Underground and I logged in and I got myself my key and I, I built the flow. Let's actually go over and show you. Oh, here it is. So my I'm in New Jersey. So KNJ Ridge 24, I think that's me or my rooftop. And so there I am. I, I live a little bit uh, northwest of New York City. And uh, it's a great little town. And so I can go get the current observations. And let's see what the weather was yesterday. So it was, you know, so the average yesterday was 78 degrees. And I can go and, you know, it was, it was hot a couple of days ago. I think the weekend was pretty hot. And so I built myself a cute little dashboard. And I can go look at the seven day history. And I can look at the forecast. Uh, looks like it's going to rain for the holiday weekend. It's, you know, my kids are not happy because they were all hoping to go to the beach. Um, so that was kind of fun. I, I had a good time doing that. I also built an historical one. And um, so what's interesting here is, you know, in Ridgewood, let's go see if this is going to work for me. Yeah, so so I used some of the Almanac data, and I was able to pull some records out of the, of the, P, of the APIs. And I use the Almanac API to say, you know, what was our record temp? It was, you know, in 1965 in the month of, or actually for today, was this uh, April 27th? The record for the day is 93 degrees here in at least in Ridgewood. Um, so I was able to do some Almanac types of things, you know, mins and maxes for the day and and for the month, um, and then. I do some like cute little charts um, that, you know, maybe I'm not the best chart smith. What, what's really cool about weather is that there's so much data that you can start to really experiment with and, and visualization uh, with GIS really becomes a very powerful tool. Like tell me a story through data, right? And, I, and what insights can we find in that data become really super important. It's not just, you know, is it hot today? Okay, it's maybe hot relative to what? Relative to the month of May, this particular day in history, all of that becomes really critical in knowing whether the climate's gonna change or not because it's gonna be hot in the summer, but relative to like hot, hot in the summer or like hot normal in the summer. And that becomes, you know, really a GIS conversation that um, that we can tease out of these APIs 
right? And so, so we've ability to to put that on a map. So the combination 